You are my next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. I shall return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall see. I claim another victory in the name of my brother. Show the enemy no mercy. The one with the most guts will win this fight. Our flood attack has destroyed the peasant's cross. How can this be the right thing to do? Brother, we must focus on the battle at hand. When Lubu is gone, the people will be happy. Are you a traitor, Lubu? You'll pay for your treachery! So you are my next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. for us all, brother. A ballista has been set up on the castle walls. We must destroy it to assist our allies' progress. Necessarily to lose. I claim another victory in the name of my brother. A true warrior indeed. You will carry our honor across the land. Desire 
acquire the spoils of war. A group has a much better chance of taking an officer's head. are a match for mine. Approaching rapidly from the south. with Lu Bu, surely. Commander is struggling. So you're my next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. None of you better try to escape. If you do, I'll hunt you down perfectly. I shall return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall seek. I claim another victory in the name of my brother. This one is heroic. I guess I need to pick up the pace. Why 
Why would you side with Lu Bu? No words are needed on the battlefield. Fight! Necessarily to lose. Out I claim way. another victory in the name of my brother. I could stand to learn a thing or two from you. He was a true warrior, and as such, he was drawn to the might of Lu Bu. This is the perfect opportunity to strike. Lu Bu's time is up. I guess I need to pick up the pace. I shall return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall see. I 
I shall return. Remember that, for yours is the first head I shall seek. Come at me in your thousands, if you wish. You'll regret your brashness in hell. I am here to face you personally. Prepare yourself. Your tongue!
Having bided his time in turning on Cao Cao, Liu Bei saw this as a perfect opportunity. Together with his troops, he led a rebellion in Shu. However, the chaos would once again prove cruel to Liu Bei. Cao Cao's massive army dealt his forces a resounding defeat. And during the course of the battle, he lost track of Guan Yu as well. The chaos continued to torment him, a man of unparalleled kindness and purity. And so he sought the help of Yuan Shao, the one man who could oppose Cao Cao. He soon found himself on the fields of Guan Du, where Cao Cao and Yuan Shao were already engaged in battle. As he prepared for this great conflict, he quietly cursed his lack of strength. strength I had. My actions have seen much blood spilled, and now Guan Yu may be dead. All I ever wanted was to help the suffering of the people however I could. promised. You would? Why? You could have looked the other way, but you didn't. That is why. Thank you. Assist our allies. Hurry!
Fight me now for glory. Must retreat. This is not the end. Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me. Any hardship can be overcome if you work together with others. has fallen before me. Lord Yuan Shao has given the order. You are to report to Wu Chao at once. We owe him a debt of gratitude. His orders must be obeyed at once. Remember that, for yours is the first head I shall see. Nice job, but still not quite up to my level. Next opponent. I'll crush you like all of the others. of a fool. If you would not have heard of us, surely you have realized you cannot win, and have come to beg for mercy. Silence! Your heads will make a fine offering of gratitude to Lord Tsao Tsao. Lord Kuan Yu? On you, you're alive. Yeah, but it looks like he's working for South South. What is the meaning of this, Yu Bei? I thought Guan Yu was your sworn brother. You have betrayed me. You have ruined everything. Capture Yu Bei at once. This is unfortunate. We must face Cao Cao's army and Yuan Shao's army. A 
do not wish to face either. We must flee and find some way to fix this away from the battlefield. Why would Lord Guan Yu fight for Cao Cao? No, for now I must concentrate on escaping. doesn't look good. Somebody, send help at once. I shall own the battlefield! You! Give me back my brother now! Lord Guan Yu is being treated well by my lord. He will return to you no more. Keep moving! No! How could our brother betray us like this? Stay calm. I am sure there is a good explanation for this. We must have faith. So, you are the famous Liu Bei. My father considers you a dangerous enemy. I think I will erase you. My path appears to be coming to an end. Our brother's in trouble! We have to help him! Hey. So you are my next hey. opponent! I'll crush you like all of the others! It's time to contact. Take out every last one! I shall own the battlefield! Remember that! For yours is the first head I shall see! Let us 
must continue. I shall return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall see. Nice job. But still not quite up to my level. your ground, traitor. I will execute you where you stand. You! One day you will pay for your crimes. Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me. It appears we have managed to give our pursuers the slip. It's good to see you safe, my lord. Don't worry about me. What about Guan Yu? Damn. That idiot! How could he fight for Cao Cao? I'll kill him! That is enough. But, brother! I will wait. Brother! We must have faith. I know in my heart that Guan Yu has not forgotten his oath. The heavens had completely abandoned Liu Bei. Without Liu Bei at Guan Du, Cao Cao emerged victorious. He seized the Central Plains and became the largest force in all of the land. Meanwhile, thanks to the efforts of Zhao Yun, Yu Bei was able to escape the clutches of Yuan Shao and Cao Cao. Searching for a land of his own, he called upon Liu Biao of Jing province. With no troops or land, Yu Bei had been abandoned by the fates. However, there was still one man who had not yet abandoned him. on you. Hmm. So he's really sided with Cao Cao. All right. You know, I always wanted to fight you one time. Zhang Fei, perhaps another time, my friend. What? Won you, prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, at last, at last I have found you. Guan Yu. My place is here. Beside you, my lord and brother. Uh. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! Our brother would never betray us! Deep down, I always knew that! <laughs> Liu Bei, a man for whom reality fell far short of his idealistic dreams. He desperately sought an answer to his problems. After Liu Bei fled to Jing, Liu Biao granted him the land of Xinye. For the first time since the chaos had begun, he finally had a place to call home. And there, Liu Bei quietly ruminated on his ambitions. His dream of helping to ease the people's suffering, the cruel reality that he had not accomplished nearly enough. 
He needed someone who could provide him with a way to turn his dream into a reality. The province of Jay, being located in the center of the land, was bustling with travelers coming and going. Despite its vibrancy, Liu Bei would not easily find his answer there. Then, suddenly, Liu Bei's days of peaceful reflection came to a crashing end. His rude awakening came at the hands of Cao Cao, who was practical to the point of cruelty and had no qualms about using power to take what he wanted. Together with Zhang Fei and his allies, Liu Bei stood before the encroaching threat of Cao Cao's army. Would his ideals be swallowed by the depths of Cao Cao's ambition?
return. Remember that. For yours is the first head I shall seek. I'm still waiting for a real challenge. Down that formation. My lord, please head to the southeast. First, we must break the southeastern gate, followed by the western. What? Well, this is pretty confusing. I guess I'll just do what you say. Now that's how it's done. You inspire us all.
formation has been broken, and the enemy commander is fleeing the battlefield. Ah! Fight me now, for glory! You may have won the first round, but the battle is not over yet. Pick yourself up and try again! Ah, easy as you like! No. Alone, we would have struggled mightily. This is thanks to Shu Shu, to the power of intelligence. If you say so. My role here is over. But why? Why won't you stay as our strategist? Juga Liang is a reclusive genius. He has the ability to see the bigger picture. Beside him. You must secure his cooperation. It was a battle of minds. Shushu cleverly directed the bravery of Zhang Fei and the others and successfully repelled Cao Cao's army. It was he who recommended to Liu Bei, the land's most brilliant strategist, Zhuge Liang. Liu Bei believed he had finally found the man he had long been searching for. However, despite paying two visits to Zhuge Liang's home, he still had been unable to meet him. Zhang Fei and Guan Yu were deeply offended, but Liu Bei continued on paying yet another visit to the home. For if it would help him save the people, he would pay as many visits as it took. And so, it was then that Liu Bei finally found his answer. This is your third visit. What is it that you want so badly from me? I wish to benefit from your wisdom. Tell me what must be done. I know what I want to do. I want to ease the people's suffering. But... But you save one person and it just brings suffering to another. What should I do? <laughs> Benevolence is a tricky thing. Benevolence means valuing the feelings of the people over efficiency or profit. Cao Cao's way. Is to seize control of the land through brute force. While your path leads the people to a land of benevolence. Your path 
is that of a true leader of men. But to make it more than just a dream, you must have the courage to unite the land. I fear I am incapable. My lord, if you truly want to make it happen, then listen, for I can help you. of virtue ruled by righteousness. That was the goal that Zhuge Liang put before Liu Bei. However, with his current strength, such a world was but a far-off dream. His weakness was underscored by the fact that Cao Cao's army had once again launched an attack on the province of Jing. Although Zhuge Liang's clever tactics allowed them to avoid catastrophe, Liu Bei's future seemed grim indeed. Following Liu Biao's death, his successor Liu Song surrendered to Cao Cao. With nothing left to fight for, Liu Bei fled from Cao Cao's army and headed south. Time was of the essence, but something was slowing down the pace of his army's march. The reason? Liu Bei had taken all of the people from Jing with him. His virtue served as a beacon for the downtrodden. And Liu Bei too refused to give up on his comrades, who dreamed like he did of a world of peace. Slowed down by the people, Liu Bei's army was finally caught by Cao Cao at Changban. Was the world of virtue destined to end as a dream before the overwhelming might of Cao Cao's army? Liu Bei and Zhao Yun, as well as the people themselves, were about to be tested. Bring him to safety. You must keep moving. Ah! Leave these guys to me, boy. All right. <laughs> We must find our Lord's son. He's been left behind somewhere around here. We must get to him before Cao Cao's forces do. Help! Help!
your back. idea of attacking a man carrying a child. I cannot let you leave. The beauty of my fighting style must 
must not be soiled by defeat. I shall return. Another obstacle in the path of justice has fallen before me. If we can get over the bridge, we should be home free. Come on!
Advance! for an army to continue fighting on an empty stomach. Pick yourself up and try again. Most impressive. You are a true warrior of the three kingdoms.
audits for your valor, but you have chosen the wrong side. You believe your wits are a match for mine? I will accede to your might for now, but next time we meet, you will not walk away. Due to the fierce display of might shown by Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei, Liu Bei was able to safely escape to Jiangsha. Having defeated Liu Bei, Cao Cao confidently turned his army towards Jiangdong. Sensing Cao Cao's intentions, Zhuge Liang went and proposed an alliance to Sun Quan. For Sun Quan, there was little merit in joining forces with Liu Bei's meager army. But Liu Bei was the only one in the land willing to oppose the might of Cao Cao. Uncertain of how to proceed, Sun Quan was approached by Zhuge Liang. He explained that Liu Bei would continue fighting even if Sun Quan were to surrender. For he would not give up until he had made his dream come true, no matter what the cost. Those words pierced the heroic Sun Quan's heart and caused him to staunchly refuse Cao Cao's demands for surrender. Meanwhile, Liu Bei dispatched Zhao Yun to the battle so that he could launch a joint attack with Sun Quan. Soon, the site of their decisive battle, Chirbi, was filled with Cao Cao's massive naval forces. And facing them was the hastily formed alliance of Liu Bei and Sun Quan. As the two armies prepared to engage in heated battle, neither side could know that the key to victory lay in the palm of the sleeping dragon's hand. attempts to control the wind are unobstructed. Cao Cao's certainly not sparing any men this time, huh? And our brother, he wants us to tackle that lot head on. You're not scared, my lord. I'm excited, boy. I'm looking forward to a decent fight. That's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. Besides... Our strategist has prepared a plan that cannot fail. Lord Zhao Yun, Lord Zhuge Liang has prepared a boat for you. I wish I knew what our strategist was thinking. How can he possibly overcome these numbers? And just what is this plan of his anyway?
your hands. We must block off the egress of Cao Cao's army. Sit back and observe the skills of a true Navy man. to my lord.
Forgive me. I've lost sight of the enemy commander. Cao Cao has already begun his retreat. Lord Zhuge Liang says Cao Cao is making for the mountains. After which you will head for Nanjun. We must stop him. 